Hey everyone, it's Cory. So today we're going to be doing a um, favorite high-end makeup video, which includes products you can get from Sephora and also more like department counter type stores. And I'm going to run through like pretty much every product that you would need to do a full face. You know, from like primer, foundation, concealer, to complexion, the whole gambit. So there are a lot of products that I'm going to mention, so we're just going to get started right now. Okay, so after you've done your whole skincare regimen, you know, you've cleansed your face and it's moisturized, you may want to go in with a primer. And because I'm oily, I like to use a more... I like to use a more mattifying primer, and for that I really enjoy the Becca Ever Matte Primer. This one is kind of tricky because you really need to pat it into your oily areas. Like for me, it's on the sides of my nose, down the bridge of my nose, and like through my forehead where I get the most shiny. But you need to really like press it into the skin, or else if you swipe it, it makes things that go on top of it very difficult to blend. But if you pat it in, then it's no problem. And this is really awesome for oil control. It's silicone free, so it it feels kind of sticky when you first put it on, but when it when it blends in with your skin, it actually feels very lightweight. For foundation, this one has definitely been my favorite for a little while. This is the Kogan Dew Aqua Foundation. It gives a really beautiful, like, skin-like finish. It's kind of like a satin finish. Um, the longevity of it, honestly, isn't all that great, but I find that if I blot um, when I need to, when I touch up accordingly, then it looks fine throughout the whole day. Um, I don't know, like, I just really enjoy the finish of this. It is pricey. I did get it at Sephora. Um, I think it's around $70. But this is for more, this is for when my skin is kind of more normal. And for when my skin is particularly oily, I really enjoy Hourglass Immaculate, which I also got at Sephora. And this foundation, it's like the holy grail of, of foundations for oily skinned people. It's, um, it's a liquid to powder and you can really tell like when you're blending it in that it pretty much like sets completely to like a completely matte finish. It's supposed to have like kaolinite clay and that doesn't dehydrate your skin but it absorbs like something of its weight in sebum which is oil. And I definitely found that I stayed very matte throughout the day with this. Um, you definitely want to have a good moisturized base underneath it or else it really clings to dry patches. But when I'm more oily I really enjoy immaculate and when my skin is more normal, I really enjoy the Kogan Dew Aqua. Now, for concealers, it's kind of tricky because most of the time, if I do have a blemish, I'll just let my foundation take care of it, and if anything shows through, then that's fine. But for when I do want to use a concealer, for the high-end side, I have the Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Enhancer, and this is pricey too. I got this at Bergdorf Goodman's in the city and I want to say it was like 50 something bucks. This is a cream concealer slash foundation I guess, but it is super thick, super em emollient, and crazy high coverage. If I really need like SOS on a breakout then this is really awesome. You'd imagine it would kind of like make the problem worse and it would kind of clog the pores because of how rich it is, but it really doesn't do anything. It just gives super super high coverage. And for powder concealers, this is Bare Minerals Well Rested, which is like a pale yellow powder, which if I want to boost up coverage underneath my eyes, I will dust a little bit of a little bit of this on. This is actually very, very high coverage for a powder though, so and especially for the under eyes. So I would only use a very sheer amount of this and you'll get like a nice medium coverage over your under eye concealer. And you know, it sets it down because it's a powder, but it gives a little bit of like brightness because of the yellow tone and it's not a hundred percent matte so I just think it works really well under the under the under eyes if you use um, a light hand with it. Now just to get the difference across contouring is when you are essentially trying to cheat your bone structure and trying to emulate shadow as a way of um, making your face look more defined and bronzing is a way of adding warmth to your face so I know that sometimes people use them interchangeably, but I definitely think that the tones you have to use for each of them are very different, so I exclusively set aside separate products for each. And for contouring, I really enjoy the Becca Low Light Sculpting Perfector. This is a relatively new product, but um, it's a cream, and it's very, very gray-based. So this is really good for like getting right in 
under the cheekbone and like in the temple and through the sides of the nose and everything because it emulates shadow. And it's a very dry cream, which I think is also very good. It doesn't set very quickly, so you have time to like buff it up. And packaging is kind of cool. It kind of looks like a spaceship. And um, yeah. For highlighters, I realized that like six out of the seven that I own are actually discontinued now. Really, truth be told, my favorite highlighter definitely is Dior Amber Diamond, but this is so discontinued and so hard to find now, so I'm not even going to go into it. But just so you know, this really is my favorite highlight. But a close second is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. I especially like the palette because I find that I can really use each of them differently um, for different looks. You know, like, if I'm going for a more cool-toned look, I will definitely use incandescent light. If I'm going for a nice warm look, I'll use, um, I'll use radiant light, which is this one. And then dim light, I can actually set my whole face with. So I think that they're very multi-purpose. The texture of them is really awesome. And, yeah, they're just really versatile. And they give a beautiful, like, kind of very natural-looking highlight. Depends on how, you know, if, if you go overboard with them, you can really build up the, the glow. But yeah, these are just beautiful powders, and this is now permanent. I know, I know that it used to be limited edition, the palette, but now it's permanent, so you can get this. You cannot get Amber Diamond, which is still my favorite, but this is also really great. For bronzing, I actually don't have a favorite um, in the high-end department, and in any department for that matter, because I realized that throughout my rotation, I really do not bronze very often I just kind of go for a highlight and a blush just because I have I don't think that I found a bronzer that I'm really like in love with so I'm not going to mention something if I really don't feel strongly enough about it that I should be putting it in the video so just to get the bronzer out of the way there is none. My favorite blush formulas are definitely the and I feel kind of bad talking about these because they're so expensive but the Chanel Jouer Contrasts if that's how you say them are absolutely fantastic. They come with this, they come with a little brush, which actually isn't all that bad. I think I used it in a video. Um, this is in the color Vivisite, which is kind of that authentic, like a radiant orchid type color. This one was limited edition though, so yeah. Um, the Chanel formulas actually, there are two of them. The US versions are like straight up powder blushes and the, the formula for pretty much everywhere else is actually baked. And this is one of the baked ones. The powder blushes are extremely, like, creamy for a powder. They have killer pigmentation, like, great payoff. And they don't have a lot of, like, kickback of powder. You know, like, sometimes when you, like, get your brush into it, like, a bunch of little powder will kind of collect in the ring. These do not have them. Like, they are extremely, like, firm, I guess you could say. They really don't... You don't get waste with these, which I really like. And you get four grams, which is pretty good. And honestly, like these things never run out. I've have, this is like one of my go-to go-to colors. And I don't know if you could see, but like the dome is pretty much completely round. So that is the color 88 Vivisite. And I feel bad talking about this one too, because this is an overseas exclusive, but my friend went to Paris and he found it at Duty Free and he brought it back for me. But this is color 170 Rose Glacier, which you may be able to find still because this was for holiday 2014. But this color, I actually just got this a few days ago, but I'm wearing it today and it is fantastic. This is another baked one. This is kind of like a cool, a cool neutral medium toned pink with like this fiery gold white shimmer in it. You can see how like it's kind of changing throughout the light. There is so much glow in this blush. This is another baked one, like I said. So, um, you know, it's not as creamy, but this is an absolutely fantastic color. And, you know, four grams again in this one. And they are just so incredible. I could do a full video on the Chanel blushes. As soon as I find my US formula one, then I'll definitely like, do a video with these because they are so good. Definitely worth the money. $45, I think that they are. So setting powder is definitely an integral part of my routine. And this is the Makeup Forever, just normal HD loose setting powder. It's 100% silica based. Don't take pictures in it because you'll get crazy flashback. But just for, you know, like 
sucking out the dewiness of your foundation and really like locking it in place and keeping your oil at bay and everything and smoothing everything out these like loose hd powders are really good they're just not good for photography flash they're not good for flash because of something i don't know but um also that was a loose one and on the press side i really enjoy the nars light reflecting translucent crystal setting powder i have a lot of pan hit on this and it looks a little bit disgusting like with the pan but this um if you've ever felt this powder, it's very strange. It almost feels like paper, and it kind of feels like you're getting, like, nothing, like, up on your skin. But this is a, um, this is another silica-heavy powder, and it's just really good for touch-ups. It has a little bit of luminosity to it, so you don't compromise glow for, um, setting your foundation. I think it's really nice. And for setting my under eyes, which is like a whole different story, I really like the Guerlain Pressed Meteorites, which I mentioned in like every single one of my videos. And it's just these ones that kind of are color corrective. When you swirl them all together, they just go like a kind of white-ish shade, but they, it really blends out. Um, this is kind of shimmery, so it just really gives like a little bit of boost to the under eye and it's really expensive. So if you want to splurge on a powder that you can sort of dust all over your face, sort of like the ambient lighting powders from Hourglass, or just something to set your under eyes or for some brightness, wherever you want to go, I would definitely go with the Guerlain Pressed Meteorites. I know that the pressed one is less shimmery than the loose ones, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we have the real hot topic of eyebrows. And for eyebrows, I do like the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. I don't think that I like it as much as other people like it because, and someone, anyone, let me know down below if this has happened to you, but almost the entire top layer of mine is dry. Like, I store it upside down and everything like you're supposed to do with, like, gel eyeliner type products, but it's, like, completely dry on the top except for one little corner over here that I just dip my brush into that corner because the entire thing is dry. See, like, I'm trying to get some in there, and it's just dried up, like... I don't know, but it's a really great color. It's extremely ashy. This one is in taupe, so it almost looks gray. They're waterproof. They last really well. You just use a little angled brush and you do what you gotta do. And so yeah, I do like this. I wish that it wouldn't dry out on me, but they're actually not that expensive either. They're like 17 and everyone's talking about dip brow. So if you want more videos on dip brow, then you can find them. But for clear brow gel, I know everyone talks about the Anastasia one, but I actually really enjoyed the Marc Jacobs Brow Tamer. I got this for holiday last year, I believe, and I still I still have some. I'm into more tinted brow gels now, but I do like this one every now and then. And this one kind of has this little, like, flocked applicator. Like, it's kind of fuzzy, so I don't know. Like, it's really fun. It, you just kind of, like press it against your eyebrows essentially and like do what you gotta do and it sets them. The formula is very um, thin, you know, it, it doesn't make your brows feel crunchy like the Anastasia one does. I, I did used to have that. This one has good hold but it doesn't make them feel stiff, which I like. I think it's different and it does the job. Okay, so there's a couple um, other categories that I could hit such as mascara or setting powder, but I actually haven't found a mascara or setting powder from the high-end realm that I really do enjoy. Like, you know, I used to use the Urban Decay setting sprays, and I've used All Nighter, and I've used T-Slick, and I just haven't really noticed anything phenomenal with them. And for mascara, I just have such pitiful lashes, and I haven't explored into mascaras just because they're so pitiful that I haven't found one that I'm into. But my last, last category, I guess, would be lip products. And I don't like lipsticks. Like, I try to keep my lips as natural as possible. I'm a boy, and my lips are gigantic, so I feel like if I tried to, like, do anything out of the box with them, it would be, like, real in your face. So I like kind of neutral, nudie colors for the most part. And in that realm, I really enjoy my YSL Glossy Stain. And I already forgot the color of it, but I just mentioned this in a video, so I'll leave that one down below. And I also really like, I don't know where I got this or how I got this, but the Bare Minerals Marvelous Moxie Lip Gloss in Rebel, which is kind of a pinky nude. This is what I have on my lips now. It's really nice. It's kind of minty, almost a little bit plumping and smoothing. 
The color is really nice. It's not crazy pigmented. It's not like a liquid lipstick or anything, but you know, I just think it like bumps up my natural lip color. Um, they're not incredibly sticky and I don't know, they just feel really nice. So that's pretty much it for all the stuff. I mean, um, if you guys have any more questions about other items that I didn't touch on, then definitely leave that down below. Leave anything else down below. Like the video, subscribe. I am currently trying to finish up a semester of college, so I, my priorities are kind of in other places besides YouTube. But as soon as that, well, then it's the holidays. But as soon as the new year comes, I definitely will be putting out more videos. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave anything you want down below, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.